It's a very interesting dialogue that we find Jesus and his disciples engaged in. The context is Caesarea Philippi, there in the northern part of, of Galilee, above the sea, north of the Sea of Galilee, in the foothills of Mount Hermon there, Caesarea Philippi. There in a very pagan context with idol worship and all of that, and Roman influence, Greek influence. And Jesus in that context, and you can look at it if you want to in your Bibles. There's not going to be scripture on the screen this morning because my sermon wasn't completed in time to get all that in there. But I'll, I'll refer to some different texts that you want to look at. And you'll see in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, the text that I'm talking about in verses 13 through verse 18. And in that setting, Jesus asked his disciples a very important question. He said, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And their response was, well, some people say that you're John the Baptist. John the Baptist, of course, had had his head cut off for uh, his faithfulness to God's Word and God's mission. And uh, they say that you're the, the resurrected John the Baptist, that you're John come back to life. Uh, some say that uh, you're one of the, the prophets. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And then Jesus asked a very pointed question. He said, but who do you say that I am? And the response given, particularly from Simon Peter, you are the Christos. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus told him, he said, you're blessed because you didn't get this from the uh, uh, newspapers. You didn't get this from psychology today. You got this from heaven. This has been revealed to you from my Father. This has been revealed to you from, from heaven. And he said, upon this rock, this rock of who I am, this rock that I am the Christ, this rock that I am the Messiah. You see, the church is built on Jesus. He wasn't saying I'm building this church on you, Simon Peter, but I'm building this church on myself and on this confession that I am the Christ the Son of the living God. Upon this rock I will build my church. And so Jesus is the one building the church. I will build my church. And the forces of Hades, as it's put in the Holman, the gates of hell, as it's put in the older King James, will not prevail against it. And so the Lord's church cannot be stopped as long as the church is cooperating with Jesus, the builder of the church. As long as the church is seeking to follow His leadership, His guidance, His will. As long as the church is not in rebellion against Jesus, but rather is fully surrendered to Jesus so that He can accomplish that which He wants to accomplish in the church As long as the church is in that frame, as long as the church is in that spiritual position, then the gates of hell will not be able to stop the church. And so we say that Heritage Hills Baptist Church is absolutely unstoppable because it is our resolve to be fully aligned with Jesus. That's our desire as a congregation, right? That's who we want to be as a church. We want to fully be Jesus' church. And we want Jesus to build this church into what He wants this church to be. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 3, and you may want to look at that prayer beginning in verse 14 and following in Ephesians chapter 3, as the Apostle Paul is expressing what he prays for the church at Ephesus. And when he gets down to the concluding words of that prayer in verses 20 and 21, Paul says, Now unto him, unto him who is able, and him there is capitalized, meaning that it refers to the Lord, unto Jesus who is able. You see, I'm not able to build a church. Dr. Philip Fong is not able to build a church, but Jesus is able to build the church. Now unto Him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to His power that works within us. Unto Him be glory in the church. You see, that's what we want, right? 
We want the Lord Jesus Christ to be glorified through His church. Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. And uh, some translations say, to Christ Jesus. But the idea is that Jesus is doing that work in the church that brings glory unto Himself throughout all ages. In other words, Jesus is still doing His work in His church. The work of Jesus in the church is not confined to the book of Acts. But Jesus continues to work in His church. And He will continue to work in His church until that day He takes His church home. And that event that we refer to as the rapture. Jesus is alive and well. And Jesus is at work in the life of His church so that He might be glorified in His church. And so therefore we are absolutely unstoppable. If Jesus is so powerfully working in His church, then why is it that that churches are in such decline today? Why is it that churches are just so struggling just to keep their doors open? This past year, 2014, just to this date, in the Stone Mountain Baptist Association, which is primarily Rockdale County, but but also we have a few churches in in some surrounding counties, Why is it that in 2014 we've had six of our churches shut their doors? Six of our churches shut their doors. Why is it? Why is it that that we're seeing a decline in baptisms? Why is it that churches are struggling? Why is it that there's such decline in churches if Jesus is so powerfully working in the life of His church? I'm going to tell you why. It's because the churches haven't been fully aligned with Him and submitted to Him and cooperating with Him and putting their trust in Him so that He can really do His work in His church. I mean, it has, that has to be it. That has to be it. Oh, the Lord Jesus Christ will take us and do great things, and we are resolved that we will be unstoppable. That we will be an unstoppable movement of God in this world that impacts this world for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're unstoppable because our mission is a mission that makes us unstoppable to know God and to make Him known. We're unstoppable because we have a vision to be a missional movement of the Lord Jesus Christ that positively connects and impacts the people of Conyers and beyond. We're unstoppable because we have the passions, we have the core values that make us unstoppable. You see, all of these things align us with Jesus. All of these things put us in harmony with the will of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of these things bring the blessings of the Lord upon us so that we can be the church that the Lord would have us to be. And now on this last Sunday of this series of sermons, these sermon series that we are are calling Unstoppable, now today we're going to be looking at at the practicality of ministry that's going to flow out of our missional statement, that flows out of our visions, that becomes an expression of our five core values. In other words, here's where the rubber meets the road. Here's what we're going to be doing because of our mission statement being what it is. Here's what we're going to be doing because this is our vision. Here's what we're going to be doing because... This is our set of values, our passions. This is our heartbeat. Everything that we're going to do from this day forward as a congregation fits in this four essentials of our strategy. Here it is before you. We are those who are going to give ourselves strongly to connection, connection with God and connection with one another in the body of Christ, and connection with other people that we might bring them into relationship with the Lord Jesus. We're committed to, to, to a strategy of growing. We give ourselves and we plan for and we strategize and we organize for the purpose of spiritual growth. We are working in the fabric of our church, a heart and a mentality of service, of service, Christian service and ministry. And we as leadership in the church are giving our congregation and we will be giving the congregation opportunities to serve in the days ahead and all the great opportunities that exist right now. 
And even though we are a church on the go, as, as I can put it to you in, in ways that an English teacher would get upset at me, you ain't seen nothing yet, right? And so we are a church on the go and we're committed to that. And these, these uh, essentials of our strategy, everything that we do fits in these categories. And I guess that even though you know that, that some of this is in our fabric and our DNA right now, listen, this is what is going to be our future. And these are areas of intentionality. And we evaluate everything and we plan everything with these headings. If you'll check out our website, most of you I know have been on our website, you see that our website is structured with these four words. Because these four words tell you our story of ministry. Uh, these four words tell you of, of who we are as far as function is concerned and how the kingdom of God is expressed through our four components, these essentials, in relationship to practical ministry. Well, the first one is connect. We are unstoppable because we will connect. We get off of the periphery and we connect. We connect. Half of our mission... It's to make God known. And so, if we're going to be introducing people to the Lord, we connect with them. And we look for opportunities to build those bridges into the lives of people. And we connect. We work together in our connection with God. We have to make, we have to know God in order to make Him known. And so we connect with God. And if we're going to be a strong church, we connect with one another in the family of God so that we can build up one another in Christ. Now listen, there are numerous ways that we're going to urge you and help you make these connections in the days ahead. But the bottom line of our Connect ministry, where we're going to be putting strong focus and where Dr. Fong is going to really be helping us, is connecting uh, through the method of life groups. Life groups. If you're not in a life group, you'll get bored. If you get bored, you'll look for adventure. If you look for adventure, you'll try to find Bigfoot. If you try to find Bigfoot, Bigfoot might find you. Don't be found by Bigfoot. Get in a life group. All right, see what's going to happen to you if you don't get in life group? (laughs) Oh, we thought we'd put a little bit of humor there. It's more serious than that. It's more serious than that. Uh, You don't want to be found by by Bigfoot, uh, alias Andy Futch. You don't want to be like like Michael Bell in that picture. Absolutely not. But you don't want to miss out on what God's doing either. You don't want to miss out on what God will do in, in, in life group if you will really commit yourself to that small group where we connect with one another and we connect with God and we, and we move from, from, from the setting of rows to a, to a circle of, of family and friends that, that does life together and, and does ministry together. And that's what, that's what that hour is to be between our two worship services. It's, it's not just a, it's not Sunday school, but it's life. It's life and it's all week long. And you meet together, you huddle together on Sunday morning, but you, but you carry out the play through the week. And you're a family together that serves together and ministers together and bears one another's burdens and looks for opportunities to reach other people for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a, it's a, it's a ministry fellowship that we have with our life groups. And Dr. Fong is going to help us move from 
from the mentality of, of, of a Sunday school class to, to doing life together and doing ministry together and really being a, a unit of, of good Christian fellowship where people are built up in the faith and the body of Christ. Life groups give us personal evangelistic connections and, and life groups give us the opportunity of having good, strong Christian support from our brothers and sisters in Christ and gives us that opportunity of being able to pour our life into others to help them become all that God would have them to be. And so the devil can't stop us because we're cooperating with the Lord Jesus Christ and we're getting connected like never before. The church family is a family of connection. We connect and we will connect. And then secondly, the second essential is, is grow. Now, look, it's a part of our core values. It's that third core value, the one right there in the middle. We value spiritual growth and, and life transformation. Grow. You see, why is it, you might ask, that we have it listed in our values and then we have it also as, a, as an essential as far as, as our strategy is concerned? Well, this speaks of heart and this speaks of function. You see, we're, we're a church that is committed to grow, and so we are uh, providing opportunities to, to grow as, as Christians. And we're going to put strong emphasis upon equipping our uh, members to be what God would have them to be so that their influence for Christ in this world can be what it ought to be. And so if you would visit our website and, and, and look there on the, on the uh, grow component and see that essential and, and see the things that we have there, you'll see that we are strongly emphasizing our equipped ministry through our different tracks of study. We have our discover tract of study, and this tract focuses on the absolute fundamentals that every believer needs to establish a healthy uh, Christian faith and, and connection in church life and service. We have another track called the Strengthen Track, and this track helps us gain a deeper understanding and knowledge of the Word of God. We have a track referred to as Life Skills, and this track it gives biblical instruction and, and practical application that enables us to live successfully a Christian lifestyle. And then we have a Life Support Track, and this track provides us an environment and support for healing and recovery from a great variety of of types of crisis that people go through in their life. And so we're all about growth. Growing and developing as Christians. Growing and developing as, as children of God. Growing in Christian ministry. Oh, it's so important that we give ourselves to this. And Dr. Fong is leading us in, in establishing this tremendous ministry whereby we can grow. And you need to get plugged into our discipleship ministry. Get plugged into our equipped program and become all that God would have you to become. And then thirdly, we have that component of service. And again, that's one of our core values. But again, it's a component of our essentials and our, in our strategy is one of our essentials. And so we plan for service. And in the days ahead, you're, you're going to be given more and more opportunities whereby you can serve the Lord and we want to help you find your place. We have so many opportunities available right now. There are ministry opportunities in, in the children's ministry, in our student ministry. So many areas where you can get plugged in and, and we have the strategy for service. We want to have this church strongly given to service ministry, our student ministry, functioning in service. Even this past Friday and going into the school and, and serving the football teams, those hamburgers and hot dogs and giving the witness there and Pastor Andy leading them in a devotional. What a tremendous time of ministry that was. Our men's ministry that is now in these early stages of development is looking for ways that we can get into the community and serve our community and wash the feet of people 
And so as we plan for the days ahead, we're wanting to fully align with the Lord Jesus Christ and be as Jesus would have us to be. We want to walk with Christ in our community, in our church ministry, so that service might take place. And then finally, we have the component of going. We are unstoppable because we're taking seriously the Great Commission of going. Getting the gospel of our Lord and Savior outside the doors of this church. Looking for ways that the Lord can use us. Thinking of how He would do ministry if He was walking in this world today. And joining with the Lord Jesus Christ and touching our neighbor's life and this community with the gospel. And touching this world with the gospel of the Lord Jesus. You've heard me two or three times as I've gone through this series make a reference to the comparison and contrast of institutional church and a missional movement of the Lord. Let me remind you again, because I want you to get this deeply in your mind. An institutional church gets marketed. It has consumers and patrons. It's self-focused and it's established, fixed in its ways. It has members who demand membership privileges. That's an institutional church. That's not what we want to be. Instead, we want to be a movement of God. A movement of God is fluid. It's ever-changing because it's adapting so that it can do its best in carrying out its mission. It's compromised not of of members and patrons and, and consumers, but rather it's comprised of what? Missionaries. People who are on the go for the Lord Jesus Christ is comprised of missionaries that are passionate about their cause. It's estimated that half of the world's population lies in spiritual darkness without any exposure of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're determined to take the gospel of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the grace of Jesus to our community and to our world that we might reach them That they might become a follower of Christ and learn the life that He would have for them. We call our missions team the Acts 1-8 team. And rightly so. Look in your Bibles at Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Look at what is said there. This is the resurrected Jesus at the time of His ascension back into heaven. Notice what He says there to His disciples. When they wanted to know about the coming of the kingdom of God and And all of these things. He said, listen, don't you be worried about times and seasons. Don't you you be be fixed on, on on those things. But instead, you get busy reaching this world with my good news. And he says, but you will receive power. You see, there's Jesus doing his work in us through the Holy Spirit. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses Locally, okay, that's what he means when he talks about Jerusalem. And then in the extended community, and all Judea and Samaria. And then he talks about the world, to the ends of the earth. And so it's our responsibility to take the gospel to our community. It's our responsibility to take the gospel to our extended community and to our nation. And it's our responsibility to take the gospel to the ends of this earth. Do you know that between 70 to 80 percent of the citizens of Rockdale County have no church connection whatsoever? 70 to 80 percent of the population surrounding us have no connection to a church. We must be on the go. We must be going after them. We can't sit here and wait on them to come to us, but we must go after them. And so as we plan for ministry in the days ahead, we're looking for ways that we're going to get into our community with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're strongly committed to to missions, not only locally, but we're committed to, to missions outside of this area. And that's why we've established our missions work with with uh, the uh, church there in Kentucky and helping them in ministry. 
That's why we focus on North American missions during the time of the Easter season and we receive a special offering for that. Do you understand that even this morning, when you put a dollar in the offering plate, that 10% of that money is going to go directly to missions? And then in, in addition to that, we have a great number of ways that we do missions work. And then we have our special offerings for missions. That's why when I tell you to give, I, I urge you to do so unapologetically. Because this world is lost and going to hell. And we've got to reach them with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way we can do that is if we financially support missions. And our church is not going to back down. Our finance team is struggling as we look at budgeting for this next year. But as we looked at missions, I said, we're not going to back down. We're not going to, we're not going to compromise there. We're going to continue on with, with a 10% of our undesignated gifts all going to missions. Last year for our Annie Armstrong, uh, not, a, yeah, our Annie Armstrong, not our Annie Armstrong, but our Lottie Moon Christmas offering for international missions. This church gave a little over $30,000 in a special offering for foreign missions. And so you know what we've set as our goal this year? We're not backing down, we're going forward. We're setting our goal this year for 35000 Why? Because this world needs Jesus. This world needs Jesus. And so we strongly support missions. We strongly promote missions. We have missions teams going to Peru, to the Asadeca Dental Missions there. We have mission team going, going, going to Peru and supported by our church uh, with, with grass, God reaching all of, of southern Peru. We, for years, have had our missions teams going uh, to Zimbabwe and working there in, in Senyati. And so we want to continue doing missions and, and going after missions and supporting missions and praying for missions. We have a precious family in our church on the other side of the world right now in the nation that we cannot mention because it's a closed nation. And they're in great danger. Their lives could be in jeopardy at any moment because of the adversities that are there and the conflict that is there with the gospel. Members of our church that are there. And then we have another young lady that's in that same country that's been there for a little over a year. And she's got one more year there in that country. But the other family, the Sepulveda family, they're there for life. They're there. And we pray for them. And we help support them. And we want to encourage them. You see, we've got to be on the go. Why? Because the world needs Christ. And so this is who we are. This is how we do ministry. We connect. We grow. We serve, we go, and every component of of the life and the ministry of Heritage Hills Baptist Church, the entirety of our structure, all of our organizations, and all of our planning fits in these four categories, and they define the practical way that we do the work of the kingdom of God in the future. This is Jesus' plan. This is what the Bible says that we're to do. Because we have a mission that is Jesus' mission. Because we have a vision that we've embraced that is Jesus' vision. Christ-centered. Kingdom of God driven. Because we have values that reflect the heart and the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we have a strategy that harmonizes with what the Bible says the Christian church is supposed to be. We are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. We are an unstoppable movement of Christ that changes this world. And you ought to be excited about the future of Heritage Hills Baptist Church. And you ought to get in with us with all of your heart. I tell you, today's the day for you to make a commitment to connect. If you're out there on the periphery and you're not really connected, you feel as though you're a guest and a visitor when you come in. You're a spectator. You need to make a commitment to connect. If you're not engaged in growing in the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to grab a hold of what we offer to help you grow and develop as a Christian. If you're not involved in service, you need to look at all the opportunities of service 
and find your place of service. And if you're not going, if you're not going to your family, if you're not going to your neighbors, if you're not going to those who work with you, if you're not helping us by praying for and giving to missions through this church, then you today need to make a commitment in relationship to grow. The reason that churches are weak and declining and struggling and doors are shutting is because Jesus is not having His way. I believe with all of my heart that's the number one factor. But we're determined that when Jesus says go left, like the song, we're going to go left. When Jesus says go right, we're going to go right. I believe with all of my heart this is what Jesus has said for us to do. I'm telling you a lot of prayer, a lot of talks, a lot of consideration, a lot of seeking God with all of our hearts has has gone into all of this. And we're so grateful for Dr. Fong and his leadership in helping us develop our missional map. And I tell you, I believe it's got the hand of Jesus all over it. And today's a day for us to just solidify in our hearts, yes, this is our future. And we are a movement of God. Let's stand together and bow in prayer.